folks so once again uh got to do some work on the 2008 dodge ram 1500 this is a 5.7 liter uh hemi v8 uh today we are working on getting the water pump out and replacing that cause that is leaking um so quickly just some things you're going to need are the new water pump obviously drain pan you to drain all the cooling out a uh, large adjustable wrench or maybe like a, like a pipe wrench maybe to get the fan off. Some pliers for the old style hose clamps. Um, flat blade screwdriver if you have the newer clamps. But you'll also need that to get the red locking clips off the electrical connectors down here on the tanks. Then a 3H drive for your uh, belt tensioner and the sockets which... Should be 10 millimeter, 15, and 13. And then when you take the old pump off, use a razor blade or gasket scraper to uh, scrape the old uh, debris off it, clean it up with some uh, brake cleaner as well in a rag. Okay, guys, so first you're gonna go up here and loosen or remove your uh, drain plug. And you're going to drain all your cooling out to a container. This is uh, what mine looks like. It's going to vary, I think, on different ones, but mine was just a uh, Allen socket, as you can see. So, you're going to let this drain completely, and then once that's done, put your... Uh, Plug back in there and go up here and take your radiator cap off. Uh, I'm still waiting for the uh, radiator to drain. Um, loosen the cap, see if that would uh, help maybe drain a little bit quicker. But while we wait, um, this would be a good time for you to uh, cut out a piece of cardboard and have a blank side in each uh, part of it. If you do not have a diagram showing you how your belt goes on, you certainly want to get in there and draw a diagram on a piece of paper or cardboard so you know how your belt goes back on because it's either under the hood it'll tell you or somewhere around here and I do not have either. So. I had to go ahead and draw a belt diagram here and set this down here. All I did was go around, do each pulley, kind of started with the crank at the bottom and uh, did it with pencil and went around with the sharpie. But if you guys don't have uh, a diagram for the same truck and engine, you can use this one. Um, got the crank water pump this is where your fan would uh, screw onto power steering AC compressor over here is the uh, upper idler pulley lower tensioner and then uh, alternator so uh, later when I put the belt on I'll just kind of go over this but you can kind of see how your belt will go around the whole system and that's it so if you do not want to use this just make sure you uh, have a diagram or write one down like I did here. Being a little impatient, I'm not going to uh, wait till this drains at this second because this has nothing to do with it. Um, gonna get a big pipe wrench if you have one or adjustable wrench, pretty large one. And um, you're going to put it onto the uh, fan and or water pump. But you're going to put it on there and then get yourself your 3H ratchet, put it in your belt tensioner down here. And you're just going to use that as leverage because sometimes these uh, can be tight. Just take a hammer and knock it a couple times, loosen it, and um, after that you should be good. Um, I do not have a large crescent wrench or adjustable wrench. So, I'm going to end up 
taking this pipe wrench off and just using this and uh, go from there. So the method of putting tension on the belt to loosen the clutch fan didn't work like I thought it was. So um, did not have a clutch fan tool and no other way to getting it off. So I uh, searched and searched and somebody on uh, YouTube actually used a chain method and I actually happened to have a piece of chain lying around. So took the end and just tighten it behind this bolt on the uh, a, it's a little bracket but it's part of the uh, AC compressor and then just uh, grabbed the thickest bolt I could find that would fit in there jammed it in there and then uh, that held the water pump pulley as I wrenched this way with the pipe wrench and uh, I didn't hammer it either that wasn't I don't have a big enough hammer to fit back there I don't have a mini sludge so what I did was just took a uh, big cheetah bar type pipe here and I just fit that right behind on here I just pulled it and that broke it loose so now I can uh, just undo the rest by hand so I have, uh, went ahead and loosened all the way to the end. I left it on there for now. I think it's going to be easier to take off just with the shroud and everything. But uh, went ahead, loosened this clamp up on the top hose, pull this off. Should be empty. Um, my clamp down here is way back there, so I'm not going to worry about it. I'm just going to leave it and uh, deal with that when I take the whole pump off. And uh, that is it for right now. I'm going to go ahead and remove this chain as well and get that pulled off so after pulling the top hose off you're going to go underneath and locate your lower radiator hose um, you can see I moved the clamp back already and did the same up here usually up here moved it down um, these hoses on your engine tend to stick so if you can get some big pliers, maybe fit around and loosen it up a bit. And then the ones over here on the radiator itself are pretty easy to get off. So um, when you remove this hose, just uh, be careful on not getting uh, coolant in your mouth or anything. So you might want to pull yourself out when you uh, go ahead and release this because it might be a little bit of coolant left over but that is uh, the next step and we'll move on from there now going ahead and way down here you'll see there's a tube that connects to your washer pump Just go ahead and pull that out make sure you have a bucket underneath so all of that can drain into it. And while that drains, you're going to also go ahead and get your uh, flat blade screwdriver. If you want to put some tape on it, you can to uh, lessen the chance of breaking these tabs. But um, basically, there's red locking clips on these, and you want to pry them back like that then just pinch it and you will remove both of these electrical connections down here kind of hard with one hand as you can see but basically going to uh, release the red locking clips and then press down on them and pull them out After you get the uh, electrical connectors uh, disconnected, come up here to the uh, overflow tube, connects to the radiator neck, just unplug that. Alright okay, guys, so, quick tip, um, I got my connection, 
the uh, washer pump, the red clip was already up, and so I hit it down when I was trying to do it. Um, this red clip should be pushed up when you're uh, unlocking it. And then the other one will just push out, as you can see, when you do it. But mine must have been uh, messed with before I uh, purchased the truck a couple years back. So now. We are going to go ahead and use 10 millimeter socket to remove this bolt and this bolt and then we can pull this whole section out of tank. Quick look guys, here's the uh, washer fluid and then your uh, expansion tank for your coolant. Um, pull straight out after you get those two bolts out, just two little tabs here. If you come in here, you can see this is where it sits, and right down there you got the two tabs that it slides right into. Alright guys, so this is where the uh, upper radiator hose is, um, right under the where the hose goes, you'll find a 13 millimeter bolt, you're going to loosen that one up, and then come over here under the uh, fill neck and there will be another one right there. You're going to take both of those off to get the shroud off. So we'll loosen those two bolts as I showed you up and I literally just grab behind it and pull it up and these two little tabs, there's one right here and one right here and those are what the shroud slides into and then just bolts up here so once you unbolt it, just pull up and you'll have that thing out in no time. Getting close to the uh, water pump part now. Um, again, these if you can get this top hose off over here, um, do that. Same with the bottom. This one's kind of stuck, so I just left it. Just make it easier um, because my water pump's coming in in a day or two. But right now I'm going to take my 3 8 ratchet. Go in here, loosen up the belt, tension like that, and then with my other hand I will peel the belt off. But at this point if you wanted to also, you can go ahead and have a clear um, look at the belt setup and the pulleys and make a diagram this way. Moving on after the belt is taken off, I'm going to go ahead and take a 15 millimeter socket and take off the automatic tensioner set that up there be careful if you have the uh, drain pan down here you don't want to drop anything um, so I'm going to finish undoing that with my hand this just holds that whole thing on and then back here you got your heater core lines that go into the water pump um, I don't know if you can see the clamp same type as the other ones so I'm going to go under there and take my pliers, move those clamps back, and then pull the heat core hoses off as well. So I just mentioned, I went ahead and uh, if you guys uh, just really isn't too hard, but being new to changing stuff yourself or fixing things, um, if you want, you can just write an O with a paint marker on this hose and then an eye in here for inside that way if you're tucking them you're not going to forget randomly if they uh, need to go on one side or the other so eye for inside you know this one's running on the inside here and then O for the outside just peace of mind that's all it is and uh, you know you move the clamps back these will probably be stuck they've been on there for a while just take uh, your pliers didn't use these on the first one, but might have to on the back one. Just uh, cinch them on there and shake them back and forth a little bit and break it loose. And uh, you might have to use these to work it off. But while you wiggle it, pull back to the same time. And eventually, you'll work it off. Make sure you got a bucket down there to uh, catch more coolant coming out. Um, this back one I can't really get to. I don't want to tear it up either. So that one I might just go ahead and take off 
when I get the water pump off to uh, get behind it just so I don't you know tear up the hose so but again I'm putting that back on for now just because the water pumps not here for another day or two but start of the uh, breakdown of the, tr the uh, front here just to get it going and prep so when I get it it's not a all day process All right guys, so two days later and I finally got my water pump in. So this one I ordered from 1A Auto and uh, comes with a gasket, as you can see there. And then the pump itself. Right here um, on the threads, there will be a rubber plastic cap. You're gonna wanna remove that, of course. But before moving on to uh, taking off the old one, wanted to suggest getting another piece of cardboard or using the back of the one where you made a belt map out of diagram go ahead and lay this on here and then take a sharpie trace it and then for all your bolts just stab a hole in each spot and then as you take your bolts out you can go ahead and put them in the correct hole so that way when you reinstall this you can go ahead and make sure every bolt is exactly where it's supposed to go all right so after you did your diagram and all that we're going to start taking the bolts off uh it's 10 13 millimeter bolts to take the water pump off and you need to take this pulley off um if you need to during this process good time to check your uh pulleys see which ones are Make any noise if you have it this bottom one i had a lot of noise so i went ahead and replaced it i think this was about uh 18 bucks at AutoZone. so go ahead and take this off and you need to take off the 10 bolts for the water pump from there we're going to switch over our thermostat all right guys so i'm working on getting the bolts off you can see what i mean by the bolt diagram you have long ones short ones so very important to do that then down here um, you take that pulley off so you can access a bolt behind it then down here this bolt is pretty long it doesn't want to come out with this pulley in the way but mine's chipped or broken so mine came out but yours might not um, and then you have to remove these four bolts to get this bracket off and then you can access a bolt back here and I think I have one down here still above the thermostat but once you get those out we should be able to pull this thing out and uh, change over the thermostat the uh, old one out here's the new one here's the bolt diagram if you uh, guys have this bolt to take out you may need a deep uh, socket 15 millimeter to get that out that or a half drive might be uh, large enough to do it then uh, I got one more bolt down here that's doing the new one, but it goes right there. So I left the hoses on when I did it um, for the lower. I just had to move this over and pop this off because it was pain to get off. Just took some channel locks, worked it back and forth, and came loose. Um, this side, this was originally right here. You got to take your uh, thermostat housing off. And this hose is just not coming off here, so I left it. Um, you have two bolts right here that go to it. The longer one goes up top here. But um, when you're doing this, if you have the extra 20 bucks, you can go ahead and uh, replace the thermostat for your new one. Just make it easier. If not, and yours is a uh, fairly new like this one go ahead and just take that one make sure the gasket's good and transfer it over to your new one and you should be fine and just uh, make sure you put your housing on but uh, just tip this long one goes up here and then your shorter bolt goes down here so I'm going to do that and then come over here and with the razor blade or gasket scraper I'm going to go ahead and clean up all the uh, edges around here and then take some brake clean on a cloth and uh, 
clean it up as well, get it all dry as possible before installing the new one. So, as a quick little sorry, chip. Um, if this is stuck, you can go ahead and uh, use a flathead or something to pop it out. But yeah, just make sure you check your gasket on the thermostat. And then reapply that into the new one. And since these clamps, especially up here, that one and that one, can be a pain just to get your uh, pliers in. Um, these are about, I think, four, three bucks at AutoZone. Go ahead and pick up some of these. Flathead or uh, socket. Much easier to get back here in these tight spots on these hoses. The um, one that goes to your radiator top here isn't too bad. Or the lower one. But these ones that are plugged into the water pump itself or thermostat housing can be a pain. So I'd recommend picking some of these up just to replace those in the tight spots. Went ahead. Cleaned it up best I could. Um, you're going to want to let the coolant dry up as much as possible before installing. So that's what I'm doing right now. Went ahead and scraped with the razor blade. I'd recommend if you can get a gasket scraper so less chance of gouging. Brake clean on a rag just to uh, clean it up at the last little bit. And now you see on the new one. Got the thermostat in, got the hose clamps prepped. They are not tight yet. I'm going to tighten them and position them when I'm in there. But uh, next, you're going to get the gasket out of the bag. And you can see it's kind of already preformed to the shape. All you're going to do is go inside the grooves right here. Now we got one hand, but just to give an idea, that's how it's going to go on just in the grooves. Follow it along, it's shaped in that uh, same way so it's in, you can't get it backwards or anything like that. But you can kind of see, get that uh, seated. And then from this point, I'm going to go ahead, mount it in there once uh, some of the coolant has dried up and uh, put some bolts in it and then I'll uh, show you guys where I'm at. Okay, so before I put it in, I just want to say... Uh, Make sure it's seated, and when you install it, be careful not to move it around and accidentally pinch this gasket, because then it's going to cause you headaches later. You're going to have to retake the whole thing apart and just be a big pain. So take your time putting this in so you don't pinch it. And remember on the front here, you got a little plastic cap. Remove that so you have the threads exposed. Alright guys, have it somewhat installed, I've got three bolts into it, um, I ended up taking this upper idler pulley off just to make some more room because I was afraid of messing with the gasket too much, but took that off just to make some room and then took the lower hose off, I thought I could just kind of ease it in there but it was just in a way left the top one just because that's mine stuck on there but if you can get rid of it so it makes it a little easier but uh grab this bolt at the top I just set it on the air filter so when I got it kind of seated through that bolt thread it a little bit and then grabbed this one down here and then one at the very bottom right there so I got those three in there and I'm gonna put the rest in um, all those bolts are torqued at uh, 18 foot pounds. So I'm going to go ahead and do that and uh, kind of start the reassembly process. Now the new water pump is secured, um, bolts torqued down to 18 foot pounds. Um, went ahead, put the idler pulley back on down here. That's a 13 millimeter. And then now I need to go ahead and put these uh, heated core lines back on. Pretty simple. Just sliding those all the way down. Just like that. Then you will take your uh, clamps and 
move those all the way back to their normal position to hold those hoses shut. We're putting the belt tensioner back on, just hand tightening this. This is a 15 millimeter. Then if you have not yet, put this bracket back on, you have this one bolt and then these three nuts. This is with the 13 millimeter. I'm gonna go ahead and put that on. Then uh, after I'm just going to walk through and explain how to put the uh, belt back on. And a quick tip, I took off the idler or tension pulley. Um, this line back here, if you want to put that clamp on before putting this on, that will make that a lot easier. And then make sure this clamp is out of the way for this uh, pulley. It gets a little tight behind there, but to see when you're installing this, there are guide pins. It just goes right in there. Easy to install. Just want to give that quick uh, couple tips. The belt is reinstalled. Um, this is where your diagram will come into handy so you know exactly what needs to go where. Um, kind of just a walkthrough on how I did mine. I came down to the crank, got the belt wrapped around the crank, pinched it right here because I knew I had to come over the water pump. So, pinch it, keep this uh, side tight, and as you work it, keep tension on it so you don't uh, fall off any of these pulleys. Um, but you'll go over the water pump and then come down to the power steering down here, come all the way up to your AC compressor, down under your pulley, and on the other pulley from the crank, you're going to go over. And then get some, uh, get your 3 8 ratchet, uh, get the tension off this, so then you can pull this up. This will loosen the tension so you can uh, stretch it over the, stretch it over the alternator pulley. Um, it's going to take a little bit of work, you just got to get on it. Um, you can use a cheetah bar here too, give it a little bit more leverage because it is a tight fit, but, um, just look at your diagram, that's all you gotta do. But kind of a quick walkthrough and how I did uh, the reinstallation of my belt. Next I will be reinstalling the fan shroud. Um, but prior to that, I'm going, I went ahead and tightened down that hose clamp. And then up here, did the same. Try to be careful where um, you tighten these. You don't want that rubbing against the belt. Mine's pretty close, but I got the excess tab going that direction, so should be good. So now I think I'm going to go ahead and get that radiator hose reinstalled down here. And then I'm going to put the fan shroud in, which this tab right here, you just slide it into. And this one down here. And if you look, this tab is what slides in, and that tab. So that the fan shroud is now in, the uh, one bolt is right here. The other one right there to uh, 13 millimeters. Um, this went pretty smoothly in. You just had to uh, make sure they were in the uh, little grooves on the side. Now, I went ahead, slid my clutch fan in there and just kind of started it by hand and just have been rotating it with the fan till it gets as tight as I can get it and then I'm going to try to use the same method uh, I originally started with trying to loosen it and that's putting tension with the tensioner and then um, just using a pipe wrench and give it one good hammer or two to try to tighten it on there um, if that doesn't work maybe I'll try the chain technique in reverse so now you can see it stopped so now I'm gonna go ahead and get the pipe wrench uh, tighten the belt as hard as I can and give it one good whack and hopefully that's uh, secure enough now give you guys a little quick look at the setup here so got the pipe wrench um, when I started it was a little bit further back so you can get some uh, room to hammer it. 
Um, got my 3 8 down there with the cheater bar. This helps me give some leverage on pulling back. And then if you have a small sledgehammer, it's ideal. I do not. So I just had to use this uh, 16 ounce hammer. Just got a big sledgehammer, which is not going to work. But yep, pipe wrench is back here. I just hit it twice. Give it some good taps. Not taps, but good good hits. Don't damage anything else. And um, tighten it up. Now I'm going to get on to putting the washer fluid uh, tank and reservoir for the uh, coolant back in. Which these two slots down here. Two tabs go in there and up here. And then we can uh, bolt those on to these two holes right here. From here, um, again... This just slid right in. You had to work on it a little bit, but slides in the two holes down there, and then you just have your two 10 millimeter bolts. From here, go ahead, reconnect your line to the uh, filler neck. Come down here and find your other line that you will connect on the washer pump. I do not see that right now, but you're going to go down there and also connect those two electrical connections down there. Got your two plugs right here. This one slides right down there. You hear that audible click. And then just push that red tab down. Then you grab your other one right here. Slide that over top. Do not hear a click on that one, but just do a push and pull, make sure it doesn't come off. And then you're going to go push down on that red tab to secure that. Then, once you find your line down here for the washer fluid, um, go ahead and plug that in. Okay, so I located the uh, hose for the uh, washer fluid. I'm going to have plugged that in. Now I'm going to come over here. Get my upper radiator hose, slide that on. Um, off camera, I'll put this clamp up here. Then, washer fluid, gonna go fill that up and then start uh, filling up my expansion tank and radiator with the appropriate antifreeze your vehicle takes. Um, and then we'll uh, start by bleeding the system. So once you uh, fill up your reservoir, your expansion tank, whatever you want to call it, radiator, um, go ahead. So now you got to bleed it. Um, start your uh, vehicle. Turn the heat on full blast. Um, wait for all the air bubbles to uh, stop coming up and the fluid to level out because it's going to drop a little bit. So you got to keep refilling it. Once the uh, level is stable, there's no air bubbles, you're good to go. Put your cap back on and then uh, just ensure that you have heat coming through the vents. And then you're all set. So thank you for watching. Please hit the uh, like button. Subscribe if you have not yet. Hit that bell next to it to be notified weekly of all the new videos. And uh, please, you know, pass the uh, channel link along to uh, friends and family to help this channel grow. And uh, thank you for supporting, and I'll see you guys next week.